They call it the Freshman 15, but those extra pounds can show up any time in life. This Northwest woman fought the Freshman 15 and won. Here are her tips on how you can too. In high definition, it's Evening Magazine for Tuesday, March 8th. When they hit that freshman year, it seems they pack on a couple of LBs. The freshman 15, how to lose it, apparently it sticks with you well after matriculation. Can you say that on TV? Here's another little factoid for you. If you are in college, there's a pretty good chance that you'll uh, gain friends, and along the way, you'll probably gain some weight as well. It is known as the freshman 15. Can anything be done to stop it? Mimi Gann has got the story. Do you know what the freshman 15 is? Isn't it like your first year in, in college, you kind of just gain a lot of weight? Yeah, I gained about 10 pounds the first year. Everybody knows what the freshman 15 is. Oh, the dreaded freshman 15. That extra 15 pounds you gain in your first year of college. So how does it happen? The typical way is you come to school and you are not used to cooking for yourself or you now have to go to buffet lines in your sorority or fraternity. Wait a minute, mom's not here. So you start to order pizza a lot. I can have cake, pie, four peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, three sodas, and that's a good looking dinner. Senior Caitlin Murphy should know. She gained more than 15 pounds her freshman year at the University of Washington. I suffered from the freshman 15 in sort of a roundabout sort of way. I got mono my freshman year. And most people get, like, lose a lot of weight when they get mono. And I gained probably about 20 pounds or so. So I gained the equivalent of the freshman 15. Yeah, so here it is. Now this philosophy major and aerobics instructor has turned her experience into a book titled Fighting the Freshman 15. I love fitness, very passionate about it. And so I thought, you know, why don't I take all these things I've learned all these things I've researched, that I've read about, that I've tried myself, that I think have worked for me, and why don't I put it in a condensed version for other girls, guys, to say, hey, you know, this is real life stuff. Four, three, two. But this 22-year-old's passion for fitness wasn't her only motivation. When Caitlin was just 14, okay, she suffered from an time. eating disorder. I know I got down to, I think, 91 pounds. And I remember stepping on the scale and seeing 91 pounds. And that's really scary. Seeing the number on the scale that was way below 100 pounds, I know intuitively that that's way too little to weigh. And that's when it hit me. I was like, I am anorexic. Caitlin admits that as a teenager, she didn't like what she saw in the mirror. My arms, that's my, everybody has their problem area. Some people are like, butt's too big, my legs are too short, you know, whatever. My arms, it's always my arms. Um, and so I would look at other girls, like, she has great arms, she has great arms. Why can I have arms like her? So it's just this, this feeling of always being compared to other people and always comparing yourself to other people. And I think that really fuels a poor body image for a lot of women. Caitlin's excessive exercising started to impact her social life. I didn't like not hanging out with my friends because I was so scared that they were going to have like pizza and I didn't want to have pizza because I wasn't going to be able to run. I'm 16 years old and while well, my friends are having fun on Friday nights going to slumber parties and um, football games, I'm at home like on the Stairmaster. For Caitlin's parents, Tom and Barbara Murphy of Bellingham, watching their only child wither away was painful. I think it just got out of balance. There was, there was the fitness and the amount of food going in were not were not in balance and i would say that um i don't think caitlin was even aware herself with the support of her parents her doctor and a nutritionist caitlin finally got back on track what parents want to do what we try to do is is to support her by really listening to her letting her explain what she was feeling I think it's very important for parents not to be judgmental, but really just to just to thoroughly listen. Caitlin's self-published book was a family affair. Dad served as editor, mom as the graphic designer. Well, I think that, that the book is really a, a, a triumph that Caitlin achieved. How do we feel? We feel proud. But what it is, it's, it's, a, it's a triumph because she had an eating disorder, got control of it herself, support from us, support from the doctor, but nevertheless did it herself, and then made a decision that she was going to take what she learned from that and put it into a form 
that she could use to help others. Nice. Kaylin Murphy will always have a passion for exercise, but now more importantly, her passion is to live a healthy lifestyle. Because an eating disorder isn't something that goes away. It's something that you carry with you for the rest of your life. Because it's, it's a way that your mind works. I have that control that maybe I was seeking when I was anorexic, but I didn't know how to do the correct way. And now I feel like I have established that control, but I've established it in a very healthy way. Freshman, sophomore, junior, or even senior citizen, Caitlin has some advice for all of us. In her book, Fighting the Freshman 15, Caitlin serves up all kinds of eating and workout tips and they're not just for college students. The thing that I find most important about exercise, it has to be fun. Make sure those toes are nice and quiet. I think that everybody can find something that's physical activity that they like to do. So if you prefer dancing, then go and take a tango class or take a salsa class. Any time you move around, that's exercise. I definitely don't believe in diets. I think that I personally believe that the concept of a diet sets you up to fail. Caitlin says small tweaks in your eating habits can make big differences. For example, when I get my mocha in the morning, I'm going to get a non-fat instead of a regular mocha. And that's going to cut out calories. And when you start to cut out calories like that, and you, you know, add maybe five minutes to your workout every week, then you're going to start to see your body get in balance. I usually try to get a sandwich. I'm not a big mayonnaise fan. For lunch, Caitlin tries to avoid too much fat. I always try to get a piece of fruit. I'll grab her water. Now they've come out with like baked chips. And for a healthy snack? I always try to grab an energy bar. And is this for a snack in between? This is for, you know, maybe if I'm going to be on campus for four hours because I have classes all morning, between classes I'll have an energy bar. And this may be surprising. I always get dessert because I think dessert is very important. You get dessert. I get I always get dessert. I think dessert is very important because if you, you know, reward yourself and you like something that's a little sweeter, you have it in moderation so you don't go ahead and like binge on it. So Caitlin's message is clear. The freshman 15 can pop up any time in your life. Just be prepared. So just everything in moderation. Absolutely. Right? Everything in moderation. That's, that's the mantra that I try to live by. Caitlin hopes to make a career out of fitness. All right, now what do you...